This next speaker is fantastic. Again, one of my one of my closest guys in my life, like the rest of these guys. And so uh, I do know that there's absolutely no way we could bring him to the stage right now in this condition. Like right now, this space is not prepared for him to drop it like it's hot in a way that we need him to. We need some energy out of him. We need something that we came here to get from him. So we're going to give him something before he even gets to this stage. We're going to bring some energy into this room that did not exist. It ain't coming from these lights. It's coming from the seats. And so you know what the deal is. Come on, fellas. Come on, fellas. We do this the way we do this for the one and only Jason B. Kendra! Well, thank you very much for coming. I know Saturday is a day you usually reserve for golf or something else. And uh, I, got, I drew the short straw. I get to follow Chris Natsky, Grandmaster Chris Natsky, A3 black belt. How many degrees do you need? Nine. nine. Oh, sorry, nine. You know, but he's getting older. I think I might be able to take him. I'll probably just take him to lunch because he's, he eats like a rabbit, so he'll be cheap. So what I want to talk about today is something that I don't think we think about enough. Who do you think you are? Who do we think we are? Are we just guys? Are we human beings? We got any aliens in here? Maybe a few. We'll keep it quiet. But who we think we are dictates everything about us. Everything that we contribute, everything that we create, everything that we are comes from where we, you know, who we think we are to start off with. So I'm going to start off in the 3D. I'm going to start off in the physical because we're all men. We're all human beings. We're all in the physical. We all have a physical body, right? Nobody's here floating etherically like, oh, the seats aren't comfortable. I'm going to float up here. So how do we get to this point of my name's Jason, and I'm a speaker, and I'm an author, and I'm a coach, and I'm a veteran, and I'm all these different things? Well, what you notice is after your identifier, after my name is, it's usually a bunch of stuff you do. I work here. I do this. I play this role. I do these different things. But is that who you are? Or is that just something you do? Is that something you just identify as? Like, I identify as a boyfriend and a nephew and an uncle and a brother. But is that who you are? Now, one of the things that is always interesting is how do we get to this point? From birth to four years old, you learned 50% of your personality. Imagine what you learned during that time. You learned language, maybe multiple languages if you come from a multilingual household. You learn how to crawl, how to walk, how to run, how to manipulate people. Do you know how those kids are good at manipulating? I want that cookie and you can't tell me no. So we learn more in our first four years of life than we have ever learned in any other part of our life. Now, from four to eight, we learn another 30%. And this is where we get a lot more of that conditioning. That's why Marcus Aurelius said, give me the man, give me the boy until seven, and I'll give you the man. Because he knew that first seven to eight years of influence creates 80% of who we are. Now, from eight to 18, there's another 15%. You know, teenagers are still learning something, even though it doesn't look like it. They're still learning something. So at 18 years old, you are 95% of who you're going to be. 95% by 18 years old. Now, if you've been out in the business world, or pretty much anywhere, have you ever noticed how it seems like a bunch of eight-year-olds with attitudes and temper tantrums are running around? Now you know why. So those are the things that create who we are. The problem is most of that stuff is subconscious. It just runs us. It just runs who we are. We don't even know why we react the way we react to the stimulus and to the influences that we get because that's just who we are. So when somebody says, who are you? Oh, my name is, and I do all these different things, but who are you underneath? And it's usually the relationships. Our ladies, we love them so much, but they bring out who we really are, don't they? They definitely show us all the little things that we're trying to hide and that we're trying to ignore. They bring it all up, and they will let you know who you are, even when you don't want to know. They will definitely let you know who you are, especially when you don't want to know. So what does this mean? Author, radio station, nice AI picture for marketing. Is that who I am? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. 
But what is really interesting is all these things that we think are us, we can actually change them if we don't like them. Most of us think this is just who I am. It's just who I am. I can't change it. I was born that way. My dad was that way. My mother was that way. This is just who I am. Well, with a little bit of work, you can actually change everything about you. Now, for a lot of us, it takes 12 steps. It takes a group. It takes all kinds of programs. Maybe it takes ayahuasca or mushrooms. It might take something really specific to get your mind to open up. But these are the things that we can actually change for ourselves. We're not stuck with who we think we are. And the biggest thing we have to remember is that we're not just a body. We're not just meat suits walking around, talking about my childhood and my traumas and my, what my daddy did or didn't do. We're not all these little things. We're so much more. So I'll ask you a question at the end, but unlike life, I'm going to give you the answer first. And the answer is you are so much more than you think you are. But the idea is you have to expand your mind by realizing this physical suit, this name, these roles I play. I'm daddy, I'm boss, I'm the employee. Those are just roles you play. It's not who you are. Who you are is an infinite, eternal, spiritual being having a human experience. To quote um, Aladdin, Robin Williams, one of my favorites, infinite spiritual power, itty bitty living space. <laughs> That's who we are. We are infinite spiritual beings having a finite physical experience. And when you realize you are an infinite spiritual being having a finite physical experience, you realize you can change. If you only think this is all you are, then you feel stuck. I can't change who I am. I can't change my body. This is who I am. Well, here's an experiment. How much of your body do you need to lose for you not to be you? Finger or a toe? Hand or a foot? How about both arms and both legs? Are you still you? You might have a little trouble moving around, but you're still you. They got nice little chairs now that get you to lunch. But that idea of I'm not just a body expands your mind to so many different realms. How many of you are afraid of death or have thought of being afraid of death? I will use Einstein's basic elementary math to show you that you are an eternal spiritual being and you never die. Your body dies. Who you are never dies. So all of those relatives you hope you never see again, they're still there. But all those pets that you want to see again, they're there. And they will meet you on the other side. But everything that we see is made of what? What are you made of? Energy. 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 Exactly. See, y'all got it right off the bat. Most of the time I get to ask four or five questions. Okay, meat, <laughs> bones. Okay. You guys are smart. So we're energy. What did Einstein say were the three characteristics of energy? Always was, always will be, cannot be created or destroyed, moves into form, through form, and out of form. So that's who you are, really. So you're not John Doe, you're not an Air Force veteran. I heard what you said, by the way. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Coast Guard. But we're not who we think we are. And the idea is we can change if we don't like. But how do we change? We recognize where those programs come from, and we start peeling back the layers. We're all onions. You're all onions. Even if you hate onions, you're still an onion. Peel back the layers of who you are. I love doing personal development work. I see some of you guys in here I've done personal development work with. And the, what I love about it is the fact that you walk in thinking, this is who I am, I'm screwed up can do nothing about it. My daddy was that way. He just made me this way. This is just who I am. I can do nothing about it. Once you start digging down, you start realizing where these programs come from. All these subconscious programs are things you adopted because as children from zero to four, from birth to four years, you are so wide open. You are so wide open and you have no discernment skills. So whatever mom says, whatever dad says, whatever your social, you know, your school teacher says, you just take it in. You're like, yeah, mom said it, dad said it, that's just what it is. You have no discernment, so you can't say to yourself, is that true? Is that real? Do I want to believe that? You just believe it. So by digging through these layers and realizing that this program, my feeling of un unworthiness comes from the fact that my father, his father died, so he didn't feel worthy. So he passed that down to me. And you've heard that uh, father's you know, the lineage of a father's trauma goes down seven generations. We've all heard this. 
The truth is because we pass it down. We pass down our stuff to our children. We pass down stuff to the kids we influence, just like Chris was talking about mentoring. We want to be very clear as men today what we are passing down, which means if you pick up uh, Seven Secrets of Modern Dating, even if you're not dating, there's still some good information in there, but Kirk and I were a part of that book. And the first step, the first key, look in the mirror. And you have to start analyzing, who am I, who do I want to be? If I don't like where I am, whose responsibility is it? If I don't like who I am, whose responsibility is it? And as much as I like to blame dad, he ain't here anymore. I can blame mom, she doesn't want to listen to it. It's up to me. It's up to you guys. You get to decide for yourself. It takes a bit of work and it takes a whole lot of humility. You take a whole boatload of crap and you have to shovel it out. You gotta get rid of it. But the way we get rid of it is by acknowledging it, by feeling it. There's a great book by uh, David R. Hawkins, Letting Go. And there's techniques that you can let go of these things. You can bring up that feeling Acknowledge it in your body and then go, I don't like that. I'm going to let it go. But remember, when you let something go, you want to fill it back up with spirit. You want to fill it back up with God. Because if you just leave a gaping hole there of you know, energy, God hits a vacuum. It's going to fill it with something. So you want that to be positive energy. You want that to be gratitude. You want that to be acceptance. You want that to be wealth, whatever it is, abundance. Those are the things that we want to replace all this trauma. Because every man in here... You don't become a man the easy way. We don't become men because we were coddled and given everything. We become men because we were pushed down, kicked down, traumatized, and then we learned how to get back up again. That's why martial arts is such a great thing. You learn how to fall. You learn how to roll. You learn how to get back up. But if we don't have that experience, we don't have those mentors, and we don't have those schoolings or those trainings, we feel stuck. And Kirk and I, on our show, on the podcast, we talk so much about healthy masculinity and what that looks like. It's not what toxic feminine says. It's not what corporate America says. True healthy masculinity is humble and it's strong. True strength is not about, look at my muscles, I'm the rock, I'm gonna bother you. No. True strength is quiet. It's structured. It's got boundaries. It's what pillars are made of. The foundation is made of true strength. All this other stuff is just you know, flags blowing in the wind. When, what's the old saying? The loudest guy in the room is usually the scaredest, and the quietest guy in the room is usually most dangerous. The guy that says, so be it, it is what it is, that's a guy who's been through some shit, because he's like, whatever, it is what it is. So who do you think you are, and who do you want to be? There are so many things that we can change today. So many avenues that we can go down to make ourselves who we want to be. What I find that works for me the best, and what I would encourage you to do is if you don't have a spiritual practice, find one. Create one. It doesn't have to be Christianity, Judaism, Muslim, Buddhism, whatever. You can find your own. Hiking in nature can be a spiritual practice. That'll get you closer to God sometimes than even going to church and having communion because our spiritual nature will help pull us out of all these thoughts that we think about ourselves. When you think, I'm just a body, I'm just this trauma, I'm just these OCD, ADD thoughts going on in my head running my life, if you can step back and go, well, who's thinking those thoughts? <laughs> it's not my mind, because I'm watching my mind think these thoughts. I'm watching my mind run through this stuff. Who is it? Well, it's the observer, it's the higher self, it's who you really are. That's the one that's actually thinking those thoughts. And that's what meditation is about. That's what a lot of the martial arts training is about, getting into that space of nothingness. And it's amazing to me, you think about it. Most of the drugs, most of the addiction problems, in, and even meditation, are all looking for the same goal, nothingness. Why do you want to have so much nothingness? Because all this somethingness is really hard, it's heavy. All these responsibilities, all these roles, all this, this is who I am, and I've got to have, you know, be responsible for everything. And then you get to a point of like, oh, maybe not. Maybe I can just say, I'm nothing. Nothing's pretty cool. 
Why is nothing cool, though? Because that's the closest to God you get. It's the closest to who you truly are you get. So by letting go, by connecting to a higher source, to who you truly are, you actually find out who you are. But it does take time. It takes time to go, hey, that's an AI photo. It's for marketing. It's not really who I am. But then how many of us do that? We have businesses. We get photos. We get some AI photos. And now we have to live up to that photo. You know how many times I had to go to the gym when I didn't want to go to the gym? Because I'm looking at this picture like that. My fate. Mm. It's time to go to the gym and change my diet. But this is what we do. Because what business tells us to do, that's what marketing tells us to do. You have to have a brand. You have to have this. You've got to be this expert. You've got to be this thing. And the older I get, the more I realize I just want to be. I don't know what I want to be. It changes from day to day. But I just want to be. How many of you on a Friday after a long week at work just want to be? You're tired of all the to-dos. Tired of the woman yelling at you. You didn't cut the grass. You didn't take the trash out. I'm going to take the trash out. Well, you didn't do what I said do. A lot of us just want to be. We just want to have that moment of beingness. But how do we get there? You've got to let go of who you think you are. So what's the question? Who do you think you are? And how is that working for you? It's kind of a deep question. I mean, you think about it, because I know when I first came out here and I was thinking about this talk, there's so many different ways I could go. But in every one of those scenarios, what I thought was, as soon as I walk out on stage and I say, hey, my talk's about who do you think you are, every one of you in your head's going, who the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> Who's this guy think he is? But since you asked that, in my mind, I decided to tell you. This is who I think I am. But it comes down to you. You know, I coach guys as often as possible. Anybody that wants to work with me, I'm happy to coach you or just talk to you. Because honestly, sometimes I hate the word coach because I can't give you anything. I'm not telling you anything. I'm helping you find your own stuff. But that's what we do. We have to ask questions. And sometimes we don't ask ourselves the best questions. Sometimes the only question we ask ourselves is, why am I so screwed up? Why do I always do this? Every freaking time, if it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. But those are those programs and those stories that are running. We've got to stop them. But you need a stopgap. What's that stopgap? I'm not doing it anymore. Stop. There's a whole process of retraining your brain because it's, if you look at Joe Dispenza's work, a lot of even the Buddhist meditation and uh, transcendental meditation, it's about teaching yourself to stop. When you see and acknowledge, I have this pattern, and this pattern is running my life, and the more I put my finger on it and go, oh, I'm doing it again, each time you catch yourself, you catch yourself sooner and sooner, then one day you go, oh, I'm about to do it. I'm not going to do it this time. And that's when you start to gain mastery of your life. And if any of you have ever seen me speak before, which I don't think any of you have, or read any of my books, you'll know that I think one of the best ways, and one of the things I did for myself was to look at my life and go, I'm not a victim. Even though I thought I was, born to this mom and dad, they chose my name, they chose where I was born. You know, I didn't choose to be born in this military family or to have this religion or nationality. I didn't choose these things, or at least I thought. Because when you just think you're physical, you just think you're the body, you're like, they did it to me. I didn't do it to you. I was a victim, an innocent little child. I beg to differ. I would like to challenge you to think that you and God are co-conspirators in your life. You had, a, you had a board meeting with the divine and went, this is what I want to experience. I want to have those parents. I want to have this name. I want to be born here because of this experience. And when you look at your life, you go, I wouldn't have fucking done that. You're out of your mind. Why would I have chosen that crap? I have a theory. As an eternal spiritual being in cahoots with God, don't you think you might be a little bigoty? Might have a little bit of arrogance up there? Like, I could take that. I could do that. So I would challenge you to think that you are no longer a victim of your life, but you are a co-conspirator and that you chose it. What did you learn? 
What do all those challenges and tribulations teach you? And how can you take that forward to somebody else? It's one of the reasons Kirk and I do our show is because we didn't have that. We wanted that. We want to save people time. So hopefully you'll listen to us occasionally and go, that's going to save me a couple years right there. That might even save me a divorce if I learn how to talk to my wife the correct way. But these are the things we can do. We can change our mind and realize I'm not a victim. And it's not about what they said, he said, she said. It's not about what my wife thinks or my girlfriend thinks or my boss thinks. It's about what I think and what I can do with it. So I thank you for your time. I thank you for your attention. And guess what? I've got a little talk of that thing too. <laughs> and if you fill it out, if you have any interest in talking to me further, fill it out and you'll get a 30-minute call. You just have to let me know. And we'll talk about it. I don't have any answers for you, but I get together. We can put our brains together. We can find some answers. So there's my info if you want to get a hold of me. And without further ado, the man of the hour, the tower of power, Mr. Kirk M. Samuels, come on down. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jason B. Kendrick.